Hey everyone, this is Steven Strawn of the Cast Iron Cookware channel, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today we're going to be doing something I haven't done before on video, and that is doing stovetop seasoning. And we're going to show you how to do that coming right up. Occasionally you may want to re-season a skillet or a piece of cast iron, just one piece, and not have to go through the process of heating up the entire oven just for one piece. Now a lot of times I hold my pieces back till I get five or six, seven or eight, and I will pile them in the oven. That way I'm getting as much bang for my buck as I possibly can. But every now and then we just have one piece, as the case right now. We have this Birmingham Stove and Range Century Series Chicken Fryer, and it belongs to a co-worker of mine, and uh, he said that he needed a little help with it. He said he believed that he might have done something wrong or messed something up, and I'm telling you, in a perfect world, nobody messes up. But in this world, occasionally we burn something on, or we let something go too long before we clean it. There's all kind of issues. But occasionally when we burn something on a piece of cast iron and it leaves a kind of a gunky mess, we'll have to go in and scour the surface a little more than we normally would. I don't believe there's a problem whatsoever of using dishwashing liquid for your uh, cast iron. You just want to make sure that you clean it quickly and you dry it quickly. You know, you don't want to leave it just setting for, you know, until it dries on its own. You want to towel dry it as best you possibly can. And I even like to take it and stick it back in the oven and let it just finish drying. But uh, this piece right here, evidently uh, my coworker had cooked something in it and was just afraid to scour, afraid that maybe they was gonna scour too hard and take some of the seasoning off. And occasionally that happens. Sometimes if you have a burned on mess and you have to really work at getting it off, you will take some of the seasoning layers off. This in here is not too bad. Some of the layers had to come off, but we have some, you know, kind of inconsistencies where different uh, foods have been cooked on. You have a little bit uneven layers of seasoning. We're going to fix that. We're going to do it on the stovetop, and we're going to do that right now. Okay, we got our pan on the stovetop. As you notice, we have a glass stovetop. You can do this on any kind of stovetop. We're going to cut it on low to medium. As you see, we have a spinner and uh, and we don't want to make it worse. So we're going to heat it up really, really slow. I have even heated them up upside down and that's probably what I'll do this time. I'll leave it on here upside down until the pan is too hot to touch and then we'll turn it back over. We want the sides and the bottom to be evenly heated. That's one thing that causes a pan to be wobbly or even a spinner is, let me kind of go over this right quick before we get into it too deeply. When you heat up a pan, especially a Dutch oven type or a uh, chicken fryer like this, when you cut it on too high to begin with, all the heat starts to radiate out from the center but initially all the heat is right here in the bottom and it actually expands somewhat and when it expands before the sides have a chance to heat up and expand then you wind up with an inconsistency that you can't fix so we're going to go ahead and leave this on low for a little bit until the pan is really too hot to touch right now still just kind of warm beginning to warm up but the sides are cool so we're going to give this a few minutes uh, the main thing is to be patient with cast iron if you try to rush it you're going to hurt it so this one right here has already had a little bit of damage but it's still a great user so i can't wait to uh, get this one looking good again we'll come back in a couple of minutes and check it out okay our pan is almost too hot to touch we're going to leave it upside down. Even the sides are pretty hot. We're going to go ahead and crank up the temperature to a little bit above medium because it's already hot enough now to take a little more heat. 
Okay, we're going to tackle this a little bit differently. I've got a great big ball of paper towel. That way I can hold it without burning my hands. And you may even want to use some gloves uh, or even uh, welding gloves at this point. Now everybody knows that my favorite seasoning is Buzzy Wax. But for this case, I'm going to use a spray bottle of grapeseed oil. And the reason why is we don't want to get burned. If you're trying to rub that buzzy puck on there over and over, you're going to burn yourself. So we're just going to spray. And you can also use oven spray. That works really nice as well. But uh, we got some good heat going on. We're, on. we're going to raise it on up to about medium. Or a little better than medium because our pan is already very, very hot. It's just not smoking yet. So we're going to leave it upside down. That way the temperature will work its way through the entire pan without being too hot in one place on the bottom. It will be evenly distributed. And really the entire pan doesn't need it. Give it a spritz with our grapeseed oil. By the way, Buzzy Wax uses grapeseed oil and canola oil along with beeswax and I really like the effect of that combination. We'll turn it back over until we start seeing a little bit of smoke. We'll wipe a little oil on the back of it that way when it does start smoking we'll know it. We'll know we've reached that point. Now you can use a laser thermometer which would work great to tell you what the temperature is but we're just going to kind of play it as soon as it starts smoking we know that it's reached the smoke point usually you can smell it just a little bit beforehand and when we do i'm going to cut our fan on so there'll be a little bit of noise involved there we go we have some smoke we're going to cut our fan on We're going to go ahead and give this a quick wipe. Now I'm using paper towel instead of my normal seasoning cloth. And if you get little bits of paper towel on your cast iron, it's not a problem. It'll burn away. We're going to go ahead and crank our heat up to between medium and high. Now we will back it back down here in just a minute as soon as it starts smoking. We don't want to get way up above the smoke point. We just want to kind of ride the wave. Okay here we have some smoke. We're going to give it a spritz. We're going to wipe it in. Make sure you've got a huge wad of paper towel. You can go ahead and tear you off another sheet. Give it a wipe. You can turn it upside down if you'd like. We're going to back it back down to medium. Now our oil is kind of coming through. Now be careful, this part is going to be very hot. That's why I say get a large wad. We'll give it another spritz. I'll wipe it really good. I'm going to flip it over. Get us another piece of paper towel. I'm going to flip it back. 
give it another good wipe. Flip it back upside down. Because the stove top is hot. Now if we leave it setting the other direction, we're going to actually burn the seasoning off of her bottom. And we don't want to do that. And if the smoke dies down just a little bit, you can raise the temperature a little bit. Give it another wipe. Give it a spritz. Get you some more paper towel on your ball. Wipe it really good. And flip it back over. We'll give the back a wipe while we're at it. Now the sides on this pan is still in great condition. So we're not really going to worry so much about the sides. So I think we flipped it two times, maybe three, I'm not sure. Another wipe and flip it back over. Go ahead and give it a little bit of a swipe on the bottom. I mean, if you like, you can go ahead and kind of go over the whole thing. The key is not leaving too much on. Now we're not seasoning the whole pan, just the cooking surface and a little bit on the bottom. I have seasoned the entire pan for smaller skillets like a number three or number five on the stovetop, handle and all. But you got to be careful though, you will get burned. While we're waiting, we'll go ahead and add another layer to our, our wipe down ball here. We still see a little bit of smoke on the top of it, so we know we have enough heat. We don't want the smoke just boiling off of it, because then we'll have it too hot. And if it starts picking up too much, we can go ahead and turn the temperature down just a tad. We're just a little bit above medium at this point. Let's give it a spritz. And then try to remove every bit of it with your cloth. And if you would like to go ahead and add another piece of paper towel, it's not a bad idea. Okay, let's flip it back over. We're going to give it one more spritz. We'll wipe it down really good. Flip it over, and we're going to go ahead and cut our stove top off. It's not going to hurt to wipe the bottom down a little bit since we have a little oil left on our on our cloth. We're going to flip it back over. Let's get us another fresh layer on our paper towel ball. Wipe it down one good last time. We're going to flip it over and we're just going to leave it sitting right here until it dries on its own. And we're done. We'll come and take a look at it after it cools. 
Okay, we got our chicken fryer uh, reseasoned in the, the bottom, and we didn't actually reseason the entire pan. We just took care of reseasoning the bottom, the cooking surface. And it is slick as it can be. Get the camera on this just right. Now, anytime you go and season over an old seasoning, you're gonna have maybe not a flat layer, but it's pretty flat. I mean, you can actually feel uh, some inconsistencies, but it is slick as it can be. You can just tell by the shine. And uh, a lot of times that is a quick and easy way to uh, maintain a, a piece of cast iron. Instead of having to strip it down and do the whole oven three or four or five rounds. Uh, there are several things that you got to remember though. Uh, number one, make sure that you have the fan cut on. Now I had my fan cut off a good bit and you can tell by my voice I breathed in a little bit of that smoke and it's not good for you, I can tell you right now. So make sure you have your fan on. You know, it's even a good idea if you'd like to do this outside on a grill uh, because seasoning does cause smoke and smoke will irritate your lungs and your eyes and your sinuses and it's just not good for you whatsoever. But just make sure you got the fan cut on high so you're not inhaling those fumes because every oil is different. Now some oils are really bad for you. You know, I'm gonna try to do a video on different types of seasoning oil here in the future because when oils break down in smoke, it's not good for your lungs, your sinuses, your eyes, it's just not good for your respiratory system at all. So we wanna be careful and be safe. Make sure that you have your vent fan on wide open, especially when you're creating a lot of smoke. Uh, number two, you don't wanna burn your hands or your fingers or anything else at that matter. Make sure that you have a large uh, paper towel ball so that you're insulated from the heat when you're applying the oil, make sure that you wipe it off completely. The number one reason why people's seasonings turn out bad is they don't wipe enough oil off. The thinner layer, the better. So, you know, make sure you do that and be careful. So there is a little bit of finesse involved. So, you know, make sure that you're careful. And uh, I hope that this video has helped you in some way. If you do try to do a seasoning on the stovetop, I hope it gives you enough information to, to get it right without having issues. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell, that way you won't miss out of new videos when they come out. And thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware.